That's right, you are now listening to Tommy Tom's One Mic. Warning, this podcast contains explicit language, triggering or sensitive topics, and controversial discussions. Thank you so much for tuning in to Tommy Tom's One Mic. I'm Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, flip personality, you know it's I. You never see my kind, never seen a fucking sliver or a slice. I'm the butcher, choice cuts, know I'm nice. You got beef? I got waggle with a knife. Now I'm gonna be wrapping up bodies up at night. Like Ray Charles, y'all know I'm out of sight. Now I'm gonna be slaying this, cause you know I love the life. Yo, you gotta read between the lines. I'm only gonna be moving when I'm read through all the signs. Johnny Mnemonic, I got an upgrade in mind. This is for the rebels and the revolutionary minds. Cybernetic linguistics, you know I'm on my mind. Prototype the new dimension, man, that shit is mine. Future is creation and creation is sublime. Make your own legend, only happens with time. Let's hit the mic. Hey guys, welcome back to Tommy Tom and One Mic. And today I am bringing a person who has worked behind the scenes a couple of times with me on my shows. It's been a while since I've seen this person. Clear, uh, I guess, can I say changes in life and whatnot, growth? Probably fair to say. <laughs> fair to say. <laughs> but uh, known this person since high school. High school, yeah. Admittedly, I was probably a dick. I was probably, you know, it's fair to say I was, I was pretty dickish in high school. But, you know, who wasn't a dick in high school? <laughs> I bring to you all Miss Juliet Emerson. Can I say that? Is that a... Yep, thank you for doing it, actually. Appreciate it. No problem. Don't worry, I'll cut that to make it seem less awkward, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you want to try it again? No, 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 no. It gives me uh, something to work with. <laughs> but no, it is uh, good to see you. Like I said, it's been a while since I saw you. And it was, it's kind of funny because uh, prior to the infamous uh, racist show, I think it was uh, Jen who had uh, mentioned something about you posting the pictures of you dressing up. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that because I don't follow people on social media so much. So mm-hmm. I'm like blind to it. And it's not something that like, I guess I'm just going to bring up randomly to you or anything like that. It's like talk if they didn't want to talk. I guess that's my approach usually on certain things. Yeah, uh, uh, it's it's weird. Um, most everybody who's obviously aware of it, um, they've just taken that same approach. No one's just cool. Do your thing, and it it's really awesome to have a a circle of people who who just kind of support you in that way. And just all right, if, if that's what we're doing now, that's what we're doing now. Let's roll with it. I mean, you know, as a stand up, of course, we make jokes. And stuff like that. I think uh, in one of my episodes, it's more so. Uh, I think uh, the craziness that uh, pronouns have somewhat become. But I've also seen like you in some of your posts talking about uh, like appreciating people using proper pronouns when it comes to you. Yeah. It, for me, it's not so much those pronouns. It's more sort of like when someone's like identifying as like asexual or I guess so when it starts going down a certain rabbit hole, the I'm just like, yeah, like uh, if, if you're familiar with Futurama at all, um, <laughs> Beast with a Million Backs movie. Uh, oh, yeah. So yeah. Schley and Schler. Um, it, it can get confusing. Um, I, I obviously can't speak for anybody. I, I use she and her. But what I kind of think might be that is they're still trying to figure it out for themselves mm-hmm. and so they're they're just they're not fully committing to anything they're just they're where they are at the time you know what i mean i can get that but, yeah and, and it, i i get it it can be very confusing uh i i think pat oswald has kind of a joke about how every week it seems there's a new phrase that has to be learned or something like that and you just need to give people a chance to catch up. <laughs> so I, I think the thing also, and you know, this might be the age thing, you know, you can use that as an excuse, but like, I think like in high school, maybe middle school, that's when I think the term bi was kind of becoming a thing. Really taking off. Yeah. That's when it started becoming a thing where, and it kind of reached that point almost where it's like, are you just saying that because that's what it seems everybody is now or what one of those? And as like, it's become more defined and like accepted. I think sometimes a lot of the terms just get like, it's reaching that thing of like, are you, 
I guess, the genuineness sometimes from certain people. There's like sometimes when there's some people that you're just like, are you just kind of riding the train, I guess, of what's yeah. going on? I mean, it, especially, you know, kind of coming out and figuring out as late as I did about myself, I try to give everyone benefit of the doubt. And maybe you're not sure. Maybe it's it's a curious situation. So you're, you're and, and that's kind of where I think for a lot of people, the cue in LGBTQ comes queer. You know, mm-hmm. It's like, it, I, I, I don't know what I am. It, it's, but it, it's weird at the moment. So yeah, you know. The figure out stage. Yeah, but I, I, I agree with you. When, when we were in high school, like being bi was kind of becoming socially acceptable at that point. And, you know, yeah, millennials have ruined so much shit. But, you know, I think at least in terms of uh, LGBTQ yeah. plus uh, rights, it's we've done a lot to further that. It's a Just, highlight of uh, the process. It is everything yeah, it, process. Yeah, and like it, obviously, like we, we furthered it and pushed for like gay marriage and got that and all that kind of stuff. But but I just mean also in the fact that like socially, we just said fuck it. We're just we're going to do this, and we're just going to be the way we want to be. And there's nothing you can really do to stop us. No, true. <laughs> I mean, I I mainly ask because of main reason talking. You know, you and. Uh, I guess your love and involvement in film industry. So there are kind of like that Hollywood scene, I guess you could say. That's where it mm-hmm. becomes like that, uh, where you question it, yeah, how gentleman. authentic is it? Yeah. 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 I'll give you that one. It's different when you know people and you talk to them and stuff like that. And then it's like, it's easier to tell someone's genuineness as opposed to someone who just seems to always have the right answers all the time, just tweeting it or something like that yeah i i think um in terms of transness it, is that a word we're going to use um in terms of trans hey, people I'm gonna, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i get in uh, enough trouble okay uh <laughs> <laughs> so it's okay i it's our word we can say that. yes, uh, yes <laughs> uh but <laughs> no it's uh, i think it's a little harder to say you know to someone uh, are you being authentic with this you know like mm-hmm. um oh what's his name that just came out recently kevin Elliot? spacey no i'm sorry no, no. <laughs> <laughs> D- different different letter different letter okay all right, all right. uh all right. no elliot um crap what's his last name played in juno oh, elliot and page. yeah elliot page you know like he's he's not coming out you know knowing the the backlash that he's going to get and all the shit online that he's going to get you know and all that stuff he's i i don't see that being a publicity move you know like i I think if someone is genuinely in the public eye that much and comes out even just the natural way that he did you know it's 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 really hard to look at that person and go like are you being authentic or are you just riding a wave you know what i mean that's a little lot more obvious to see the genuineness as opposed to others. But off that, I figured we might as well just address that right off the top of the show. Get that out of the way. This way it doesn't seem like it's some uh, elephant in the room or some <laughs> shit like that. I like to just, let's pull the Band-Aid off and shit like that's that. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I, I actually in. just did with did that with someone the other day. Use the exact same expression. Just, oh, yeah? <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to Band-Aid this real quick. Just rip right off. <laughs> But no, I'm glad that uh, you agreed to do this. You know, I know you've been busy and, you know, the whole, you know, whole change in the world and shit like that. And, you know, figuring out the place and what you're doing. Uh, You know, I wanted to, I guess, take this opportunity because I don't think you and me, we've talked, but I don't think you and me have just like sat down and just had a conversation to actually get to know each other and shit like that. No, um, and, and kind of to your point, uh, back to your point of in high school when we met and everything, I, I would agree you were maybe kind of an asshole, but again, so was I who wasn't. But you, you were kind of that person that like, it works because you're a comedian, but you were so funny with it. It's just like, <laughs> oh, I can't be fucking mad at you because I'm laughing. Like <laughs> it's, it's, It was the 
I say stupid shit. I just go into like a stupid level of like, ins- it's not like I'm going to like directly insult like, and I, I never make like fat jokes towards people. I'm like, that's just, that's not it. I'm going to just pick out the stupidest thing or something that I'm just going to mess with you about or something mm-hmm. like that, that it's like, I'm just going to do this, that I look like an idiot doing this. And I know I'm looking like an idiot and you know, I'm looking like an idiot. And it's just this little, I guess, game, I guess I played with people and stuff. I think most people got it. I'm sure there's some that didn't and whatnot. And, you know, to each their own. I can't go back and change that. Can only move forward. So (laughs) I appreciate that you, uh, I guess you understood. It was never anything personal or anything. I just, I had to make my jokes. And that's how, I guess, we all find our way to deal with uh, high school. (laughs) Yeah. I think even in high school, you always had a kind of thing for film and stuff, I guess, because uh, I know you went to college and uh, there was a communications major. Would that be? Yep. I guess uh, what ultimately, I guess, you know, you don't have to give the whole life story. You know, I was born on this day. I mean, no, you don't have to give that, it, you know, but like, I guess for film, what really uh, attracted you to the idea of film and wanting to get into it um i i think i I just i like hearing stories i like telling stories um just it it's entertaining to just sit down and pass the time with something really entertaining in that way and we're in an age now where yeah a lot of people read but more people are watching stuff and consuming their stories that way so it just seemed like a way to be part of a world that really interests me and uh you know kind of kind of helps me get through day to day oh i get that that's like uh that was like me with writing it's that little kind of i don't want to say escapism but i can't really think of a better word (laughs) i guess you could say uh but you know it's that like you can play with the imagination i like i often talk about like being a kid again and stuff so anything that kind of like triggers that feeling usually you try and like you you grow this attachment to that yeah uh, and like to to writers credits like you and and uh you know mark shout out mark it, it's i'm not good at that kind of writing i don't think i'm a very gripping novelist if that makes sense but i think i can do okay like jotting down and getting down loose ideas and finding ways to connect threads between them. I talked about this in uh, my episode with my uh, college friend, Christine, uh, because when I went to Cortland, and I didn't realize at the time, but in like retrospect, now that I'm older, I realized what they were, what this one guy was trying to do, but it kind of like disappeared. It was like a one, we were like the trial group to do it. It was uh, this like digital living community. So you had the writing major, the like professional writing majors, there were three of us. Then he had three communication majors. I think, I forget the two. I think one was digital editing and one was just straight communications. And it was like three and three of us. And we were like these trial things. of just like, we're going to put all, all nine of these people together. And a court, they have like these four uh, core classes that they have to work together. And there's a project that they're making at the end. So it's like finding that synergy. That's why I think a lot of things in entertainment, when you do them, that's why you have those groups and stuff like that. And I think a lot of people, I think in the mentality, they go straight, they're thinking, oh, I'm going to be the next Spielberg or something like that. And they forget that there's all these other people that make Spielberg, Spielberg and stuff. Yeah. He he doesn't do it. He does a lot. He does a hell of a lot, but he doesn't do it all by himself. So they were basically creating little production houses with you then, huh? Yeah, it was just this one year and a lot of a lot of them just changed majors. Like uh, the girl, Christine, she actually transferred to Maris. I was the only one that stayed. The other one she went into just become a, an English teacher. So she went into that. And then some of the communications guys, uh, Portland's a big uh, phys ed major school. So some of them just transferred into that. So it just kind of resolved and they didn't really do it. And I know the main teacher that did it, uh, he transferred to Buffalo State maybe a year or two later. But it's yeah, like... Like took a job there? Or yeah, he took mean? a job. 
Okay. <laughs> didn't know. He's... Didn't know teachers transferred like that. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, you know, in college, it's a little more free moving. <laughs> <laughs> He just, uh, took a higher paying job, but he had like a cool, he had like a lot of cool ideas. Like he actually had like, I guess you could say he was before 2020, he did a digital class where you had to get an avatar and go in and stuff like that. And like when I went there, one of the requirements for the class is that we had to buy, I guess this is going to date me. We had to buy an iPod and I mean like the big ones, not like, <laughs> not the, as they shrunk and they just became iPhones and stuff like that. But like, the block the, the original brick mm -hmm. yeah gotta buy that and we're gonna use that for storage to upload our uh videos and stuff like that i remember uh i went to sva for one semester because that place is expensive as hell and yeah they, like you had to buy your own computer and like they had their own apple store but you had to have a computer to do any of the work so mm -hmm. 2500 2500 something like that 2500 bucks for a laptop don't get me wrong i love i love them but oh yeah i uh <laughs> i still have I've, I've revealed this i still have the apple laptop i bought my freshman year of college it's what i edit this <laughs> in the podcast <laughs> on still i have a new one i like so i haven't like held out i have the new like a uh, 2019 one that I do like all the social media and stuff on, but I just, for whatever reason, just the program and all that is just so familiar and easy for me to just work that I just do it on there for right now until I, uh, one, I uh, move out and get into a better situation and set up so that I can actually uh, upgrade all my equipment and shit like that. And two, I'm a, I'm a fucking cave. I'm a, I'm a fucking cave, man. I, I, I'd like, I stick with my old stuff. <laughs> I mean, shit, I still have my Legos and Connects that, you know, I don't, I don't watch TV. I'm either doing podcast stuff like this or I'm playing with Legos and Connects. It, it, you don't have to feel bad though, because I also have my laptop from my freshman year of college. I cannot find a battery that fits it anymore. Mm -hmm. it, it only works plugged in. I've lost a lot of hours of work on some things because of that. And all of a sudden the power cable just drops out for a second but yeah i still have mine i, I like but, you i've gotten other computers that can do more and do better but <laughs> just the familiarity it's like uh, old faithful I, I trust you like i've just yeah. gotten in the habit that after i edit something save it real quick save it real quick before <laughs> before you move on don't do, try and do too much before you save yep and i don't know about you but anytime like i get a little far and forget to save or something and I lose a fair bit of work, the next time I load up, like any time I do an edit, like save, 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 save. Yeah, that's exactly what I've, I've been doing with these. It's just like, nope, I just need to, <laughs> one, it motivates me to get better at doing it. It's like, I need to stop having to like edit myself so much of uh, my me going, ah, 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 before every fucking sentence or something mm -hmm. like that. And I just like have to like sit there like, all right, this forces me to get better. And at the same time, I feel like it's like a machine work. You just go in there and just like edit, save, edit, save all along. But it works, you know. I have, and for and I guess not to knock on wood, uh, it's been pretty good the last couple episodes. I have had no stops or any like freeze up. So I'm like, all right, old girl, you're coming back. And my shit is fucked up. Like, I don't even have a screen, it's plugged into a monitor. And the keyboard don't work, so I have a keyboard plugged into that. It's really just like the the I guess the mouse pad thing that I just use with the clicks. That's that's really it. You just get a Bluetooth mouse, and it just turns into a com entire like just tower. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's, uh, it's Frankenstein's monster. Let us not until it dies. I I am gonna have that fucking thing. But uh, you said uh, you went to what is it as SVA, uh, SVA Visual Arts. Yeah. All right. So, SVU. Hey. SVA. Fucking yes. shit. <laughs> Not Law and Order. I, I wouldn't mind working on Law and Order. But, uh, no. Yeah. The School of Visual Arts. Um, admittedly, it's a really great school. Um, it's just, like I said, really expensive. Uh, each semester for me uh, was going to be fifteen thousand mm. dollars. So. 
$30,000 a year is just a little bit more than I could handle at the time. So left, came back and found another school where I got my associates in communication and media arts. And you, uh, when did you start working uh, with our boy uh, Lex? Because I know was, you guys took classes together at uh, Sullivan. Yeah, we actually didn't like have classes together, um, but we did go through the same program. But it was one of those kind of one of those kind of places where you just you really enjoyed being there, even if you didn't have a reason to be there. Mm. So a lot of people were always just hanging out and just doing, you know, random stuff. It, it, it wasn't necessarily just being there to do media work. You were just there to be with people. And it was a really nice community. I started working with Lex uh, 2015, I think is when he pulled me down to Florida mm. for that summer. Yeah. <laughs> pulled me out of Boston with the, the year they broke the record for the amount of snowfall in one oh, season. Yeah. <laughs> so so the last weekend of february i just go through this hell of a winter cold snow and i'm staying in this apartment that i have no heat in my room and my room is actually essentially someone else's closet like it, it, it was a, it was a two-story apartment that uh, used to be an old office building that someone renovated into a uh like an artist commune type thing and someone had taken what was really a downstairs living room and turned it into their bedroom. And so to get to my room, I had to actually walk through their bedroom oh, to get man. to mine. And it, it, they put their bed, huge room. Like I said, it was a living room, right? They put their bed right next to my door. <laughs> and it's, it's not a quiet door either. So they keep early hours. They're sitting there going to bed at eight o'clock, nine o'clock. And I'm sometimes leaving for the night at like 10 11 <laughs> that must have been that must have been some awkward <laughs> oh god it was so bad it was so bad um definitely a couple kind of flash points went off there i bet there was some conflict <laughs> but so I, I go from that whole situation and again just the freezing cold winter to sitting outside this I have no idea what kind of place it was, but just this little bar down in Orlando on like February 27th and I'm wearing shorts outside. And I'm like, this is, this is wrong. This, <laughs> there's something, <laughs> this is not right. You went into like the complete bizarre world at that point. It's mm -hmm. <laughs> I went into the upside down. Absolutely. Yeah. So I didn't know it's that you actually went down to Florida. I thought, see, I knew you were in Boston and I thought you would come back to Sullivan. And you're just like, you would uh, just do the fly outs from there. I did that, I did that for the majority of the time I was working with them. Uh, but yeah, that first summer. Oh, my God. Can I tell you this? I don't, I'm not even sure Lex knows this. <laughs> <laughs> I sold my guitar to be able to work for this company. Oh, um, really? Yeah. Like he sits there and he calls me up and he's like, hey, I want you to work with us. I'm like, fucking amazing. I'm in. <laughs> and so he. He says he wants me to train at some place in Jersey or Connecticut. And I have no money, but I'm like, okay, I'll get some money for a train ticket. I'll make my way out there and, you know, we'll be good. We'll, we'll train. And he's like, awesome. Perfect. And I sell my guitar and this, I loved this thing. This was my favorite guitar. And like to the point where the guy that was buying it was sitting there after agreeing to buy it. And he's just trying to shoot the shit. And I look at him and go, dude, I'm not trying to be impolite, but if you don't leave right fucking now, you're not leaving with the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> so I sell the guitar. I get like $320 for it. I'm online looking for train tickets to Jersey or wherever. And Lex calls me back and goes, hey, so change of plans. I'm just going to go ahead and fly pay to fly you down to Orlando. And I'll just train you from here and we'll fly you out to wherever you need to go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> oh, that sucks. <laughs> yep. I, I'm, you know, obviously I couldn't call the guy back and, you know, hey, sell me my guitar back. Yeah. Have you like kept track of it? <laughs> like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, it, it's gone. It's it's with someone else. For all I know, it's with other people after that. 
we had our time together. <laughs> you you always had the memories. Yes. <laughs> oh man. Oh you know, the yeah, the sacrifices sometimes to just follow a career and stuff. Yeah. How long did you work with work with the company? Basically up until the pandemic started. That was kind of the year things really just went to shit for everybody. Yeah. But like, there was there were things going on with like contract negotiations, I guess, were being hammered out and stuff like that. So the jobs just really weren't there that much anymore anyway. It's a complete switch up. Yeah. 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 So, you know, find other work in the meantime, keep a roof over my head and everything like that. And then the uh the movie eventually came along so yeah persistence keep on done i think we reached a good halfway point take a little break when we get back and we'll just uh touch a little on the movie your vomit some of the stuff you did on it and whatnot and then uh then we'll talk on uh maybe some of your favorite films and stuff like that we'll go into that a little we'll be right back after this and we're back and not a moment too soon. Uh, <laughs> during the break, uh, your friend Juliet and me, uh, we, we started discussing some certain things. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I guess we fell upon, uh, I guess you, you're banned from Facebook. You pulled uh, my dad of uh, your posting thing. But I think the key thing that he said that uh, I, I personally found uh, enjoyable was the, uh, it, it wasn't even that bad this time. <laughs> <laughs> you know staying as if this wasn't the first so oh yeah so so yeah i, I get a uh, i get a 30-day ban um and I, i'll admit i bite i see the trolls and i bite and i i know but i still do it so i i'll fully try to defend myself and yes i've said mean things to people but i am going to claim vigilante status here and say I only do it to those deserving <laughs> Uh, but so I did call someone a bitch once, but they were sitting there and it was a discussion on the whole they, them discussion. And they were sitting there saying people should refer to trans people as it. I'm like, wow, that is fucked up. You are a bitch. You know, a just matter of fact, immediately slammed with a 30 day ban because of, you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't automatically go to 30 days. It escalates. We don't have to worry about the other stuff. Um, but so I, I come back and I, I'm being good. I'm doing okay. Like I said, it wasn't even bad this time. It, it was someone being whatever about the women's national team after they won a the, uh, bronze medal just one recently. No. And, you know, so I, I just sat there and I said, you know, it, it's real easy to sit here and say shit when you're probably never going to accomplish even half of what they've done in their lifetime. You know, you can just sit here and bitch and moan, but it's not going to change that fact. And I'm pretty sure the algorithm picked up the bitch again. So I got slammed with another 30 day ban. God, I, yeah, I'm so glad I don't post as much, but I didn't know bitch had like, uh, get, wow, we have really, we have really uh, tightened our assholes about how. Uh, <laughs> I, I think it's, I think it's one of those things like it, again, as I said, it, it escalates. So they give you like the warning and you're like, hey, you're being kind of a bitch. So, cut it out <laughs> and you go okay fine and then you keep being one and you get the day ban and then a week ban then i think it's another week ban and then you get hit with a 30 day <laughs> so i will fully admit i said the word bitch in the post but can can we not agree bitch Cont and moan <laughs> bitch and moan is not calling someone a bitch <laughs> You need the actual context of it, dude. I was watching a, a thing, and they were talked about how AI works that way. Like, mm -hmm. if you show AI, like, a picture of a pizza, it can identify a pizza better than a human can right now. But if you sit there and ask it, like, is this a meat lover's pizza? And it's filled with just, like, pineapple and shit. It won't be able to identify, like, specific questions or that kind of thing. Can't so, go too in-depth. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think I got hit with that. So, and, and that's where the second account and Juliet, as opposed to Julie, you know, came. The provision of uh, the new account. Yeah. We'll see how long. Which is still the... banned. I'm restricted on that one too. I haven't done anything. I literally haven't done anything. And it's there just I know. There I know. There I, uh, 
this bitch again. <laughs> yeah, it has to be. They have to know the accounts are connected in some way. Like uh, all the same friends, couple of the same. No, fuck that. You're not tricking us like that. So cheers. Credits to uh, credit to Facebook's algorithm for knowing that shit. These pictures look awfully similar. <laughs> That's funny. You know, uh, you know, I think it wasn't until like 2020 that I started hearing, like actually knowing people getting banned on Facebook and stuff. I know some comics, my dad, as I've stated <laughs> and whatnot. So, you know, it's funny. What I, what did your dad do? Like, I have to know what your father did. <laughs> if if dad, it's not too bad and it can be shared, I, I will say that. I, I honestly don't know. My, I have my assumptions. He's a uh, he's a conservative. He's definitely a Trump guy. Uh, so I'm sure that one of those had to be from that. I know he he currently. I don't know if he's banned now. I gotta. I, I should probably check that because uh, this was <laughs> only happened a couple of days ago. I know he uh, posted a picture of Biden with a uh, make uh, the Taliban great again hat or something. So, you know, uh, don't get me started on that stuff, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just my dad's reached that point. He's uh, retired down in Georgia with nothing, <laughs> nothing to really do. So he's uh, he's found social media. So <laughs> he's the ideal Fox News. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, <laughs> and uh, probably <laughs> the other comic, Preston, you know, it'll just usually. <laughs> Whenever I, I, when I did like episodes with him and stuff, he would always be like, he's like, yeah, I can't share this on Facebook. I'm banned right now. Uh, <laughs> <I'll>, uh, <laughs> I can do this on Instagram though. I can do this on Instagram. I, I do the same thing with my brother all the time because he and I will like meme each other a lot on Facebook. It's gotten to the point where when, cause he's still living out in Boston now. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> so when we leave each other, you know how people sit there and say, hey, call me when you get there. Let me know you made it safe. It's, yeah. No, no, no. It, it's tag me in something later. You know, oh. it, it, I, I'll know you've made it back because you tagged me in something. You fucking millennials. <laughs> so I, I can't I can't do that, though. I can't do anything right now. And it's I needed like someone to mow. I need someone to mow my yard. I can't make a post to find help from friends. Mm hmm. Uh, you know, strangely, 2020 was kind of, it was a fucked up year for me. It was a fucked up year for everybody. But I think it gave a lot of people a chance to grow and learn a lot about themselves. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I think in like 10 years, we're going to look back and not be happy about 2020. But we'll kind of go, all right, maybe it wasn't the worst overall. Obviously, not everybody will say that there's there's maybe, maybe scratch that <laughs> no no it's look this is a common conversation that i uh i've had on this podcast with people in the course because common thing is like what did you do in 2020 to stay busy and stuff you know some people that they got into comedy in 2020 and they've been doing stuff and whatnot it's uh the year of reflection that's really what i kind of dubbed it because yeah it's, I think that'll be a good way to look at it. And I think that will be the way that it gets looked at. People weren't distracted. You, you know, you had to really kind of look at yourself and figure shit out. They do this thing with actors, uh, I guess, where like your, your first semester, whenever, I, I, I don't know. But apparently they sit you down in front of a mirror and they tell you to just look at yourself for like 10 minutes. And a lot of people apparently just start like crying and all that kind of stuff because it's hard to look at yourself because what do you do you start to look at all the imperfections and everything like that so i th i think 2020 was the year we were told to sit down and look in the mirror yeah <laughs> in in many senses <laughs> some people could handle it some can't you know and it's it is what it is you know uh it's the move on point now especially for everybody but i know uh as we talked, so you did recently uh, work on a film, fish uh, photography and all that. Principal photography, I believe that's the proper Principal term. Photography. Yep. You know, uh, I guess, you know, you, we were talking uh, before recording. Uh, you did a lot. There's a lot on there because uh, a lot of people got sick. I guess, uh, how was that? It's funny, you know, the, the expression is a, a dream job or a dream opportunity and kind of stuff. 
And I fully understand now where that expression comes from because the day I went back to working uh, my normal job, it's almost like the entire thing didn't happen. Like it, every, every bit of it, I, I honestly loved, even the moments that I hated. Like it is one of those stupid cliche expressions, but it, I, I did. It was just the perfect experience for what I was looking for. And it was a really validating experience in the whole confidence category, you know what I mean? Because this was my first real movie set and my first real opportunity at this. And I am I like what I did, you know? I The the director that I was working with, he's, he's a great guy. Um, he put a lot of faith in me and I, I can't thank him enough for doing that and giving me the chance to work on this. You know, it, it, it was everything I could have hoped for. Yeah, you know, uh, I think what I appreciate from uh, what we talked about is that uh, clearly not taking, I guess, the easy way. You know, it wasn't like the easiest process and stuff. And no. for some people, they probably wouldn't be as uh, appreciated as you are. Like you said, it's like, it's kind of, sometimes it sucks, but it's like the dream scenario at the same time, because to really do something that, I guess you could say that you love, you don't want the, sometimes you just don't want the easy way. You actually want to work for it. Yeah. I, I mean, there's, there's definitely that bit of me and, and that bit of it there, but I, I also am one of those people that, you know, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. <laughs> Bullshit. Oh, yeah. You know, work is work. You know, even if you love doing it, there's going to be some days where you it's, it's just work, you know, but always keeping in mind the other places you've been and every step you've taken to get to the point that you're kind of blase about your dream job for the day. That's what's going to help you push through to the next day after that, when you love it again, you know what I mean? And I think that's what I really enjoy about going down this career path is every day is, is different. You know, like like I was saying earlier, it, I enjoy stories and that kind of thing. And every day you're, you're working on a new story or a new part of the story. I think about it just you know it's always weird how things go in the course of like uh when you're trying to do stuff you have an idea of what you're getting into so you're kind of prepared mentally then you're doing it and sometimes it can be overwhelming and other times gratifying at the same time I you know I'm actually I'm doing something that sometimes I guess for me is kind of the most important part I don't know (laughs) Yeah, no, I I get what you're saying. It's just when those waves of realization of what you're doing hits you, right? Yeah. I I remember two times uh, when I was working with Lex, I was flown up to Minnesota and I I just kind of hopped up onto the uh, banister or whatever the structure they had where I was going to be seated for the weekend. And someone just looks at me and goes, well, it's pretty clear that you know, you're the videographer with the way you just jumped up there. And that's just one of those like, oh, holy shit, that that makes me feel really good. You know, someone just <laughs> called me out for, yeah, like, yeah, being cocky, I guess. But yeah, yeah that's me. <laughs> exactly. But the, the real big one that I had while working there was, I, did he ever tell you the story of um, when the um, the venue like had that whole pipe issue and they had to cancel the event no yeah oh my god so huge event like one of the biggest of the season it's at this place in pennsylvania and i guess like a a a water main breaks or something like that and it's one of those places where it's the hotel and the venue and so where the place breaks where the pipe breaks is right around backstage area so where all the electrical and all that shit is so they wind up having to cancel the event And they close off the place, you you know, police come, they put caution tape up because it's slightly hazardous. But because we still had equipment there and everything like that, we got to go behind the caution tape. Like everyone else had to, you know, stay behind, don't come, don't come through. But we were able to cross that barricade and go into the, uh, you know, the special area and that kind of thing. Hmm. And while we're packing up, I just stop and go, you know, this is one of those moments that you just, I'm doing it. I'm I'm living this life, and I, I have I this opportunity it. to be here. Yeah, <laughs> I made it. I'm, I'm behind the police line. Yes. Yeah. 
glass ceiling. How about police line? That's my <laughs> that's my goal. I want to pass that. Baby steps, you know, baby steps. <laughs> those little those little victories in life sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But no, uh, as I did state before the break, I didn't want to, uh, I guess, get into some of your like film influence, like maybe some of, uh, I don't know if we had that in the recording or not, but we did talk about, uh, you know, the, you know, watching the Netflix things as opposed to uh, the writing. But like, uh, I guess, what are some of your like top films in your brain and stuff? So it, this is going to sound bad, um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm actually more into like TV shows than oh, I am like, yeah, you know, it's, it, it, it's funny. It's, I, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this, but I, I always laugh at the fact that I sit there and go, ah, I don't want to start this two hour movie is so long. It's so involved. And there I'll sit for five hours of a TV show, <laughs> but I think it's just some of my personal favorites, definitely dark Knight. I, I know a lot of people might say that, but it's just, Chris, what Chris Nolan did with one of my favorite characters and what Heath Ledger did with one of the greatest villain, villains of all time. It's, it's an amazing movie. Like you can hate all you want and give shit all you want, but it's, it's an amazing movie no matter how you slice it. Um, but that's, that's like where my quality drops drastically. <laughs> Then we get into the personal favorites. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like I'm not going to give you. I, the, I'm not going to sit here and say, uh, you know, uh, what is it? All these uh, Oscar nominees. I'm not going to say they're good, but they're Oscars in my heart. <laughs> yes, you know. Oh, I love all the president's men, and you know, <laughs> uh, there will be blood. <laughs> Those are my favorite films of all time. No, no, uh, it's. Um, it's, it's actually probably one of the worst movies of all time. I've never seen what its Rotten Tomato score is, <laughs> but do you know the movie Grind? No. I, 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 I think it's Adrian Brody. There, maybe Adam Brody, but there's a Brody in it. Uh, a... <laughs> <laughs> it it's just this movie uh, about this group of guys who want to get uh, signed with this skate company and they go out and they oh hear God. that he's yeah he, this famous dude that they all admire is touring the country so they go if we can just get in front of him we'll we'll wow him and all that sorts of shit so they go on tour following the tour around hoping for every chance to get in it and it's just it's it's road trip with skateboards and i just i love that <laughs> Hey, it feels <laughs> pleasure. I, exactly. I, I can respect it. I can respect yeah. it. I mean, you know, it's a number of people we know good. that are uh, Rocky Horror fans. I, I have to respect. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I, I love Rocky Horror, too. I, I, I have love for that movie. It, I actually have uh, really fond memories of it. But, no, there's, it's such a bad movie. And, like, the, the sound editing at points just are atrocious. They, they, they have lines that just don't fit or make you give the wrong context to everything like that they use that song boom by pod but it oh, ends too quick you know what scene. now that you said that i can like envision the trailer in my head like i've seen it before but then again i think that song was used for a number of like these type oh, of movies yeah it, that thing was used all over the place <laughs> but the song was too short for the scene in the movie so they just restarted the song <laughs> it's it's not good it's so oh, bad man. but it's one of my favorite movies i might have to put that on our list because tina and me we want to get back to uh our bad movie watching our two favorites of course being jingle all the way which i think is a christmas classic and then uh three ninjas uh oh that's a that's an amazing the one with the little oh, kids right yes oh my yes. god Yes, I love that movie. <laughs> when the three, I guess you can say stoner dudes, you could like describe them as go to kidnap the kids. And this is this is how that we watched this on VHS. I can't tell you the number of times we stopped and rewind just to watch the scene where they're like kicking in the door to get the kids, like after they've just gone through all this shit. And they just kick in the doors and they here we come, little dudes. Uh, they kick open the door and then the door just swings and then just comes back and smacks them in the face. And 
to say that Keenan Mew just died laughing is an understatement. We've watched that so many times. So I have much respect for horrible movies and stuff. I love watching uh, reactions on YouTube of people to horrible movies so I can learn more horrible movies to watch. So that's a great idea, actually. <laughs> but uh, I guess to round out my list, it's a toss up between either Pineapple Express or Euro Trip. Hmm. So you like those, uh, the trip movies, the group of uh, friends just getting into. You know what's weird though? Like, I, I don't. I, I guess I do. I can't argue that given what I've just listed as two of my favorite top three yeah. movies. <laughs> uh, um, I don't know. I don't know. I no, you know what? I, I guess I do. Have you ever seen it's a, it's a mad, 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 mad world or however many mads are supposed to be in that title? Like once. I can't really remember, but I know it, I've seen maybe uh rat race it was like a 2000 yeah, the game. first it's the earlier version yeah 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 it's, rat race was a remake um mm-hmm. the, the original one is so much funnier <laughs> but yeah i guess that's kind of the same premise and you know circling back to tv shows uh wacky races mm. that that was one of my favorite like just especially oh, old shows characters and they all yeah get them you know they're racing across the country or whatever and that kind of thing and there's Dick Dastardly or whatever his name is. I think Lego is supposed to do a movie like that. Like the Lego movie presents some like thing where it's all the different characters racing across. Is Wacky Races coming back? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> In a Lego form, I assume. In a Lego fashion? Yeah. I, I may have to uh, look into this and possibly do a South Park homage. They actually do an episode on Wacky Races. <laughs> All the adults freak out. Oh my God. <laughs> they run, they grab cereal and all sorts of shit. Are we watching at your house or are we watching at my house? We've got to decide now. You didn't say the TV. I assume South Park is uh, on that list of uh, top tier. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. If, if you're doing like God tier TV, um, South Park is definitely on that for me. I know a lot of people have given it shit the last few seasons, but I, I think what they've done is great. I got, I, if I can get my Mormon parents to watch an episode of South Park about the Mormons, and then oh, my dad not, spend that not the one where they called them dumb the whole episode. Yes. And my dad sent it to other people in the church because he thought it was hilarious. That's amazing. <laughs> that is one of my favorite episodes. You know, I had to ease them into it. There's the one episode where they're all in hell and uh, just listen, wait, wait, I'm, I'm a Christian. It's like, no, nope, no, nope, you're wrong. Uh, no, I was, I was a Protestant. Right, Protestant? No, nope, no, nope, you were wrong. Who was right? That would be the Mormons. <laughs> <laughs> like those episodes have a special place in my heart because it's just like, even in comedy, I'll hear the Mormon jokes. And it's usually the same thing, more than one wife, something like that. So clever Mormon jokes, I fucking love. <laughs> just like, and just how they did it with all the like, they're all dressed up as missionaries up there in heaven and stuff. And I'm just like, this is, oh my God. Have you ever it's seen like, a state show? No, it's it's like, it's on my list of the, like, things I got to do once things like open up. Yeah, you know, I, I definitely want to get out to see that at some point. Yeah, those those guys are amazing i just heard that they signed on to like uh through like season 28 or something like that i believe it do you you think they're gonna try and outdo uh the simpsons yes do you think they can outdo the simpsons Mm, that's a tough one because i like how much is matt granny actually doing on the simpsons now oh no he's gone he he left a long time he left and went and did my favorite show personally futurama and then after that, he's, he's now doing disenchantment. Like, I, I don't think he has anything to do with The Simpsons at this point. Mm-hmm. Well, that'd be my, my point then of like, I guess it could if like Matt and Trey step away and then they just have people just take it, they can do that. But I have a feeling that's not how the show's going to go. Whenever The Simpsons ends, probably South Park will be held in a little bit of a higher regard. Maybe just in that, just on that stage that it's like the people that created it follow through to the end. Yeah, I can give you that. I think also the fact that from the beginning, it's positioned itself as a show around um, pop culture and like what's happening in the now yeah. kind of helps it as well. Like everybody started getting mad at The Simpsons when they 
shifted from individual character stories into you know the more w- what's happening at the moment yeah trying to copy like no offense but you know offense to the family guy fans i don't see it as anywhere close so it had no. it had it had its moments but never I, I don't think, and I, and I, and again, I hate to say this because Futurama is my favorite show and it happened twice, but I don't think if a show gets canceled at all, it ever has a right to claim top spot. You know, even if you came back, I don't think you ever have a right to claim top spot. No, yeah, I mean, you can still be good. I mean, I think of like uh, Wrestling Development, uh, what is it, uh, Community, all these shows that like had different stages. Like, I mean, Community, I think it, after, was it NBC? whatever network it was on, then it was like on Yahoo for like a season. Then it went to like Netflix for another season and stuff. So yeah. And I love the shows, you know, I mean, Oh yeah. Community. Like I think I was, I think it was off while we were off at one point, but community is one of those ones that I just cycle through. There's just just great episodes, you know, Uh, (laughs) for a lot of people, that's, I think that's where they found uh, Donald Glover, Charlie's Gambino. For me, it was, Derek comedy, the bro rape dateline investigation thing that they did. And they have like all these like comedy videos on uh, that they did on YouTube. Oh my god, I- was that those guys? Yeah. Oh that my was- god, the, those were like what oh three oh four or something like that. Yeah, I think that oh, was my- maybe even before he maybe he's working on Thirty Rock. He might have been working on Thirty Rock. I'm not sure. I didn't but, know that. No, they did. That's amazing. That's awesome. I, I I have been a uh, Donald Glover fan a lot longer than I thought that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's, when you go back and you look at it, it's like, oh my God. Yeah, that's him. Uh, and funny thing too, they made a movie, Mystery Team. Oh, I think you would love it just based on your taste in movies that we have discussed here. <laughs> Trust it's me. the absolute terrible, trashy taste I have. It, it's n- like, You're not you giving like Donald the- Glover a glowing recommendation right now. <laughs> Yeah, I guess not. But no, hey, this is early on. And it wasn't meant to be like a pot. It's based on one of their skits that they do of like these, they have this mystery team that they like solve mysteries and whatnot. But it's always like kitty stuff. And then like some little girl comes up to them and is like, can you tell me who killed my mommy and daddy or some shit? And they still have to solve this case. It's hilarious. And there's some I feel great a little embarrassed not knowing this at this point. <laughs> Definitely check out Derek Comedy on YouTube. You can see all the videos. There's there's just a plethora uh, of greatness on there. Uh, <laughs> Girls are not to be trusted. That is a uh, a favorite between <laughs> my college friends and me that we saw. There's so many, but like it's always funny to see people start, I guess, and where they uh, ultimately end up and shit like that. So yeah, much recommended. He's done it all, like doing it all. Stand up music. <laughs> movies i think my first real introduction to him like i didn't even watch community until last year i think it may have been that one uh spider-man movie that he has that cameo in. oh really yeah oh you know it's funny um miles morales you can kind of say was created because of donald glover because was that whole debate before <laughs> morales was a character uh what happened was it the amazing spider-man with uh not Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield, yeah. So when they were like, people were trying to figure out casting for Peter Parker, there's a big swell up that Donald Glover should play and Peter Parker. That's the first time I heard the name. And I'll be honest, I, I'm still not 100% sure, but I'm, I'm pretty certain at this point that he's not related to Danny Glover in any way. <laughs> he's not. Okay. I, I, <laughs> if you want, you can check out his stand-up special because he touches on that and he touches on the Spider-Man thing. He's like, yeah, everyone's like that, you know. It, he's wait, the the one on Netflix, black and nerdy. <laughs> yeah, I have. I've seen. I I don't remember him t- talking about uh Danny Glover, but I do remember this that bit that you're talking about. Uh, and then talking about Shaft and how Michael Cyrus should play Shaft. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the first time I heard his name. I, I was aware he was big, like he was he was a person, but I wasn't consciously or you know really aware of his until that spider-man movie yeah man and he's got the tv show atlanta is that a comedy yeah it's i, I guess you could say it's an fx comedy w- what does that mean like, exactly like archer it's like FX real comedy, them, there's but... like there's real issues but there's like an underlining like comedic feel too 
Oh, okay. Like dark comedy. Gotcha. That's, he's going to get a Marvel property at some point. I know that like he doesn't have a credit, but Ryan Coogler does give him credit for helping with uh, some of the writing for uh, Black Panther. And he did an animated Deadpool, but they scrapped that to do the movie. So he's been like just circling around. DC should uh should nab him first. Static. <laughs> oh, that would be amazing. I wasn't even thinking that. That would be oh, awesome. <laughs> yes, yes, right now. Tweet it out. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> Glover for static. Static for Glover. However you want to say it, I am here for it. Um, no, I was thinking maybe as like uh John something, the the second Green Lantern. Oh, John Stewart. John Stewart. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if he has. I don't know if he has the gravitas for it. I don't know uh, if he's got the belt. Yeah, because like John Stewart, just from the cartoons, he was the more serious Lantern. Yeah. Let's face it, the easiest one. It's like, yeah, Idris Abra. <laughs> but he's already, he's already yeah. done that. Job. He's down, done with Suicide Squad. So that's one thing I always like. It, it honestly irks me a little bit with Chris Evans. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it so much and I love him so much and I think he's done great as Captain America there was not a better choice but the fact that he already played Johnny Storm he can't let go of that <laughs> it, it just it irks me so much until we get a new Johnny Storm legitimately <laughs> I guess who's uh Michael Michael B he's another one Michael B yeah. Jordan he played Johnny Storm and it's a curse no one a, no- no one's played in the uh the everyone who played uh Johnny Storm went on to play a better role <laughs> in the actual Marvel universe. and a, a better comic book character in the same kind of universe. Marvel. Listen, that that is a note to future actors out there. Audition for Johnny Storm at any opportunity yeah, you take have. it. Take take that L. There's a W right around the corner for you. <laughs> Suffer now for the win down the road. I heard about uh, Trevor Moore uh, the other day, you know, uh, the, the whitest kid, you know, guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and he wound up uh, passing away, I guess. And so I've just kind of been going back through some of the, that stuff. And I found, I guess this was something they did during the pandemic. They did a role-playing game over Zoom. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I've just been kind of going through, and I'm on, like, episode nine, and I'm not even sure how many more there are to go. The thing sometimes you get like latched onto and stuff like that. Yeah. One of my favorite bits that they ever did. Um, did you ever watch the show? No, I know no. it. I just... Yeah, there's this one bit that actually has Trevor Moore as the main character in it. And it's, I call it, it's Saturday. And it's just this dude who's supposed to be like this 35, 37 year old guy. Alarm goes off and he's just a four-year-old kid on saturday morning it's saturday it's saturday he jumps out of bed his wife is like does this every week kind of thing and just it's the sheer stupidity but the sheer joy of just being a kid on saturday again Hmm. and it's just one of my favorite little skits that they ever did (laughs) and and anyone who's sean Locke too oh god damn it all all of them are going away this uh last couple weeks man uh do you know sean Locke, british comedian no uh i i highly trevor moore if you want to go look it up that's that's fine that's whatever yeah i i love it but you know it, i highly encourage everybody to go search john Locke, carrot in a box <clears throat> it is one of the funniest little four minute segments that might be out there on the internet that's, right now that's kind of so I have to check it out myself. That sounds there's, so there's two. There's there's a the original and then a rematch. You can watch the rematch. That's kind of on the level with the whole Trevor Moore thing. If you want to go watch mm-hmm. that, but I highly encourage you watch the original Carrot in a Box. I have to do that. Sean Locke. Sean Locke. Carrot in a Box. I, I, I don't want to send anybody to some uh, weird place on the internet. <laughs> You're gonna get like messages. This was not what I was expecting. Uh, this this is this isn't funny. This is weird, Julie. What are you? Is this what they call watch? furries? <laughs> <laughs> I can see that being uh, rabbit porn in some some circles. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Well, I think this is a good uh, segue, you know, uh, before we get out, I guess I, I wanted to ask, uh, I guess some of your plans, you know, for the future and stuff, you know, after you've, uh, you know, you got that, that taste of Hollywood. <laughs> it, it's always, uh, it's always hard to get that taste and then have to go back to eating gruel, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> every, every show or any, uh, I do in the city and then I come back and then I'm back to socking shells. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. I know that. Uh, yeah, no, it's, I, I, I met a couple people while we were doing the movie that a couple of hopeful things might be down the road for me. I don't want to say anything right now. You know, don't want to put it in the ether so it can get thrown back in my face in some negative way. Mm. But I, I have another movie that I'm coming up working on soon. Uh, the same crew so hopefully it's you know gonna be a nice transition there that one it's uh christmas in canal town uh, hopefully it comes through and comes on and yeah it there's there's a lot of stuff coming up that i'm excited about and i will hopefully have a chance to share that with everybody else so i'm, I'm excited Charlie, yeah, it was great having you and guys if you're listening to this podcast great thank you you know uh, hit that like, subscribe, or whatever platform you're listening to this, whatever it offers. And of course, if you want to reach out to me, you guys can hit me up at Tommy Tom P88 on Instagram and the Tommy Tom 88 on Twitter. Uh, I guess, uh, do you have any Twitters or like to, uh, you know, before you're banned on that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I try to be better on, on Twitter just because it's a much more uh, public mm-hmm. space, you know what I mean? um but uh mm. I, I have a youtube it's it's only stupid little videos right now but you know um crystal lotus if you want to search that basically at the moment on there right now are some fun little stop motion things and cute little stuff i did last year during the quarantine but mm. like i said hopefully uh bigger and better things are coming soon so yeah definitely and guys we will have uh links of course in the description if you guys want to check all that out but Juliet, it was uh, great reconnecting. I mean, it's been like a been about a year. Yeah, it's been about a year, probably yeah. since the, the show. It was good uh, reconnecting, uh, seeing your growth and everything like that. And uh, guys, we will catch you all next time. I'm Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Flip personality, you know it's I. You never see my kind. Never seen a sliver or a slice. I'm the butcher choice. Cuts know I'm nice. You got beef? I got waggle with a knife. Now I'm gonna be wrapping up bodies up at night. Like Ray Charles, y'all yeah, know I'm out of sight. Now I'm gonna be slaying this cause you know I love the life. Early. Yo, you gotta read between the lines. I'm only gonna be moving when I'm read through all the signs. Johnny Mnemonic, I got an upgrade in mind. This is for the rebels and the revolutionary minds. Cybernetic linguistics, you know I'm on my mind. Prototype the new dimension, man, that shit is mine. Future is creation and creation is sublime. Make your own legend only happens with time.